Welcome back guys and welcome to all like 8,000 or so of you that have just started following the channel. I wanna take a quick second in my intro and thank the new guys and the guys that have been here since the beginning. All of your support means a ton and I'm appreciative that you guys are helping this channel grow and wanna stick around and find out how this build goes. So thank you and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do because it helps me out. In this episode, we've got a carbon hatch to put on the car. It fell into my lap by complete surprise, which is a pretty cool thing to have happen. We've got the exhaust housing for our G42 1200 Garrett Turbo, which is huge and I'm pumped on it. And we're gonna put the car on the scales and see how much progress we've made on the weight front. Last time we weighed this thing, it was a stripped shell. And now we've got an engine mounted, we've got body work done, and we've got the cooling stack in place. So we can get an idea of where this thing might land. But first on the list is that hatch and chopping it up. So I know you're wondering how on earth does a hatch for a Ferrari 308 just fall into your lap? And that's a pretty fair question. But a local guy reached out to me looking to sell this thing and it was perfectly timed. He bought this hatch back in the 90s, making it around 25 years old, give or take. And he never ran it, but it definitely shows its age. It's been moved around a lot and not really all that well cared for. It's got lots of nicks and dings. It's got a decent bit of cracking to it that I'm gonna have to go in and repair. But overall, it seems worth the money. This thing was pretty cheap and it was local, which means I didn't have to ship it. Not to mention the fact that I had tried to make contact with another manufacturer in Europe and have yet to get a hold of them. If we flip the panel over, you can see the inner facing carbon and this whole panel is made of carbon. We are just looking at white outer gel coat on this thing. It's two panels bonded together, which is the reason for that. And while it would be cool if this thing was all raw carbon to look at, I don't mind the fact that it's not, it's gonna get painted anyway. And while it's white, at least it matches the body kit. And no, I will not leave the body kit white for those of you suggesting it. If you're asking me, that's a pretty terrible look. Now, of course, the most important question for this hatch, it being made of carbon, is what does it weigh? And I'm pumped to say this thing is gonna offer a serious weight savings. The scale shows that this thing weighs just 20.2 pounds or just over nine kilograms for everyone else in the world. Now, that is a few pounds heavier than a more modern-made dry carbon hatch or engine cover, if you want to call it that. But in the end, I haven't even been able to get a price quote or reach a manufacturer for one of those, and it's also only a few pounds difference. This one is still 41 pounds lighter than the factory engine cover, and that is a huge weight savings, especially considering where that weight is on the car. It's very high up. That's going to do a lot for driving dynamics. With the hatch on the car, you can see that the fitment really isn't all that great. It leaves a lot to be desired and is going to need some work. And I have a clamp spreading the upper wings of this thing because these pedestals, which are used to hold the rubber bumpers that kind of align the hatch, are interfering with the body and keeping it from sitting down properly. So we're gonna do what anybody would do with a very rare, hard to get carbon hatch for a 308 and start chopping it up. I'm gonna modify these support so that the hatch will sit down properly and if we need to we can go back in and box these in although because i plan on mounting this thing with hood pins so that it's easily removable for servicing the engine especially at the track i'm not really sure they're going to be necessary whatsoever i used the finger sander on the first side to modify this thing but my impatience got the best of me and i used the flap wheel on the second which worked out great and made really quick work of both the carbon and the aluminum support inside of it With everything clearanced, the only thing left to do was to fit it back on the car once again. <clears throat> and once again, you can see that this thing is just sitting in place. It's not bolted down, but it's already looking a lot better. The lines are lining up. It's closing up some of the gaps, and I'm confident with a little bit more work, this thing's gonna fit pretty well, especially given that this is a race car, not a show car, and we're saving a bunch of weight with it. And yes, we will come up with something to fill the hole where the factory slats went. 
With weight on the forefront of our thoughts and as such an important aspect of all of the decision making on this build, Khalil and I were eager to weigh the car now that a lot of the components have gone back in. The first time we weighed it back in episode two in stock form, this car weighed close to 3,200 pounds. And when we weighed it last, it came in at 1,185, at more or less how it sits now, minus the bodywork, the cooling stack, and of course the engine and transmission. While there's still a ton left to go back into the car, weighing it now can at least give us an idea of where we're standing and what kind of room we have left to go. Now, some of you guys are bound to notice we are only weighing this car with three scales because one of the scales in this set doesn't work. It means that we can't get cross balances and side to side, but we can at least get a front to rear balance and we can get a total weight, which is much more my concern at the moment. Cars up on the scales. I haven't looked at the total number yet. My guess is right around 1,700 pounds. That's what I'm hoping for. Khalil, what do you think? 1750 or so, maybe somewhere between there and 1800. All right, let's find out what it is. Yo, 1524. Oh, fuck, we're off. How is it 1524? Dude, that's so much lighter than I was expecting. That's with an engine in it too. That's crazy. Yeah, so yeah. We've got, at the moment, no front brakes, no plumbing, not a fuel cell in it, there's no turbo stuff. I mean, there's a lot of stuff still to go in this thing, but it's starting to seem like there's no way we'll have problems staying under 2,500 pounds. My buddy Amir was saying we might be looking at 2,300 pounds, and seeing that number, knowing that the engine's bolted into the car, we might be even lower than that. It would be crazy if this thing winds up somewhere in that 21, 2200 pound range. All right, so maybe, you know, 22, 2300 pounds is a little bit unrealistic because doing some napkin math, if we're talking about wheels and tires, brakes, all of the fluids, all of the kind of accessories that still need to go on this thing, we're probably looking at 800 to 900 pounds that still has to go back in this thing. And we're gonna try to keep that under control but it's something to account for. Stuff always weighs more than you expect it will, so I need to keep my expectations very reasonable. But even if we add 850 pounds to this thing, we're still only at 2350, and that would be absolutely mental for this car. That's nearly 1,000 pounds pulled off of the original weight, so I'd be really happy with that. I'll be happy with 2500, but I gotta stay realistic about it. What will add the most weight is the turbo system. As mentioned, we finally have the turbine housing for our G42 1200 Garrett, and the complete setup is coming in at about 32 pounds, plus the rest of the entirety of the turbo system. The weight isn't surprising for the turbo though, because this thing is huge. It's about the size of my head. And honestly, the 1200 horsepower ceiling isn't gonna mind lugging this thing around once we actually hit that point. With a turbo manifold, the water to air exchanger, all of the charge piping, the waste gate, and the blow off valve, we're talking about a decent chunk of weight that's gonna go into this system, but in the end, I'm still confident about where we'll end up. So that's probably all of the interesting stuff for today, but those of you that like small details and discussion about the car, I do have a few other things to actually wind up talking about on this thing. So the first two are related to the rear hatch and some of the design elements that I would like to implement. The first one being an F40 rear Perspex window. I really love that the way that the F40 looks and I think in contrast to the 308 and 328, it's much more aggressive. I also like the ability to see through that Lexan and down to the engine. And I would love to incorporate something really similar on this car. And since we have a composite hatch, I think that's gonna really open up opportunities to start modifying and adding to it, and maybe custom cut a piece of Lexan to go over the back and completely change the rear design. I did find a real F40 rear window for sale for the astounding price of $4,500, which I guess for a Ferrari part like that isn't that big of a deal, but geez, that's expensive. So I haven't decided if I wanna pull the trigger on something like that yet because that feels kind of insane, but maybe we can custom make something of our own that will fit the car and do something very similar aesthetically and give us that same kind of air profile for the car, good for aerodynamics. The second worth talking about is the rear spoiler setup. So we have this duck bill to go on the back of the car, but I've mentioned this thing's going to have a big spoiler mounted over the back end of the car. 
A lot of you guys have said, how about chassis mounting the back of it coming off the you know, back of the car, maybe through the back of the car. And I don't think that's the overall aesthetic that I want. What's cool is if we look underneath the rear hatch, we've got a pedestal on each side of the car that's very reinforced for where the original bumper shocks went. And those are gonna be great locations to tie in uprights for the rear hatch. And what I'm thinking is building a pedestal up from those points that sit against the inside of the hatch and then mounting the spoiler to the hatch itself. The spoiler and the rear hatch will all come off in one piece, but the downforce will be transmitted through that rear spoiler, through the hatch and to the pedestal, which is tied to the chassis. I think that'll be a more elegant and eloquent solution for this problem. And I think it will look the best for the whole car. I really don't want some crazy structure protruding out of the back of the car and wrapping up and back around. Not really my style. Last but not least is a ton of you guys have been asking one very similar question, and it's understandable because a lot of you guys are new to this series. Plenty of you are asking, why are you hacking up such a nice car? Why didn't you start with something that needs work or needs repair, what have you, one without an engine, anything under the sun, why this one? And the answer, as I've said before, is really simple. It's the single cheapest car I could find that wasn't riddled with rust and completely wrecked. It wouldn't make sense to buy something like that because it would take far more money to get it to a point of usability and repair and adds a ton of time to the entire project. I just happened to get a really nice one for really cheap. And that's unfortunate for anybody that wants one of these cars in perfect condition. This car isn't showroom perfect, but it is really nice. Nicest car I've ever owned. But unfortunately, it's just a result of what I wound up landing on. Sorry to anybody that's upset about cutting up a car like this, but if you're asking me, nothing is sacred when it comes to cars. With all that said, this episode's a wrap. I will catch you guys on Tuesday next week. Thanks again for the support.